In our last video, we discussed what SDI was and how it works. However, this is one of many options for video applications. One of the most common interfaces for transmitting video data is none other than HDMI. So how do you know which one to use for your video application? Stay tuned to find out. The introduction of HDMI was revolutionary because it helped transform old analog AV into the digital high resolution interface that we use today. Almost every device today has HDMI, which offers a full bandwidth digital video format with up to a six gigabit per second lane rate. HDMI uses four shielded twisted pairs known as the HDMI cable. Despite its benefits, however, HDMI does have its drawbacks. First, it's important to know that there are different bitrate requirements that are needed to support higher video formats. 270 megabits per second is known as standard definition. 1.48 gigabits per second is 720p HD. 2.97 gigabits per second is 1080p HD at 60 hertz, and 4K at 30 hertz is 6 gigabits per second. If you wanted to double that to 4K at 60 hertz, it's then 12 gigabits per second. Some applications are now utilizing 8K, and for 8K at 30 hertz, the rate is 24 gigabits per second. So what are the limitations of HDMI compared to SDI? The most noticeable drawback of HDMI is that longer cable lengths can suffer from signal degradation. And as a result, performance with HDMI can get limited beyond 20 feet. On top of that, today's video applications are now evolving more towards the use of 4K more and more, and that starts to lose performance at around 10 feet. And as we said before, today's applications are even moving beyond that by using 8K video. The increased data rates with these formats make it harder to transmit those signals across longer distances. Unlike HDMI, SDI is able to support long distance video transmission without needing to sacrifice signal strength to do so. The coaxial cables used in SDI offer a point-to-point -point connection. This requires less design effort for integration compared to the video over IP connections that have complex requirements. Other issues with HDMI include the challenges presented by high bandwidth digital content protection encryption, otherwise known as HDCP. HDCP protects from the unauthorized duplication of audio and visual content as it travels between devices. You may have encountered the need to set up HDCP for certain devices, cables, adapters, or software drivers, and it's also common in industrial and medical settings. To utilize HDCP technology, a license must be obtained, which includes an annual fee thus contributing to an increase in overall system costs. When comparing the connectors used in each standard, you'll start to see why people tend to prefer the long-established BNC connectors of the coaxial cables in SDI. This is because they're known for their secure cable lock-in mechanism, as well as their durability and ease of field repairability. Conversely, HDMI connectors don't have a secure lock-in mechanism. They're also complex to assemble, and they can't be field repaired as easily. In other words, with HDMI, something is a lot more likely to go wrong, and it's also a pain to repair if something does go wrong. So yes, HDMI has been widely adopted in today's video devices for compatibility between the different video systems. But when it comes to mission critical environments or applications, SDI is sometimes viewed as the better option due to its reliability and efficiency. Look at nothing's working.
Ooh, there's no weather today. It's canceled. The use case needs to be well considered before you choose your interface for transmitting and receiving video. What are some other reasons people may want to switch to SDI? Switching to SDI may also be needed if you're doing single link to dual link or multi-link conversions or vice versa. Sometimes you may also need to switch to SDI if you're dealing with conversion between some of the new video interfaces. And finally, due to its efficiency, some people switch to SDI if you're experiencing some various technical difficulties. Right now, so nothing's working. Now everything's just gone. Literally five minutes ago, I checked everything to see if this was here, it was there, and now it's gone. It ultimately depends on what the application is, what the situation is, and what the constraints are of what you're trying to work with. There is no best format or one size fits all approach. And this is why considering the use case scenario before you start is very important. For instance, we discussed earlier that HDMI connections aren't as secure as the BNC connectors on coaxial cables that are used in SDI. If you have an open set, for example, where wires are running across the floor and someone trips over an HDMI cable, the cable can unplug. It is a hassle, yes, and it might even require a new HDMI cable, but the odds of anyone getting injured or your expensive equipment falling aren't as high. On the other hand, with SDI, if someone trips over a coaxial cable, the secure connection means that there's a good chance your expensive equipment will be toppling over and possibly even injure multiple people. Again, it all depends on what you're trying to do and what the limitations are and the workarounds are of whatever your scenario is. We hope this video helped clear up some of the differences between SDI and HDMI for you. But if you do have any more questions, please do feel free to reach out to us. Remember, at Symmetry Electronics, we're able to help you with all your SDI and your professional audio and video needs. Need help choosing between SDI and HDMI for your video application? Our applications engineers offer free design and technical support for your designs. So be sure to contact Symmetry today.